Botticelli and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Libra for August 2015. Go to my website aspiritualspark.com to see a list of my current offerings, to sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community, and to see more about my newest offering, Unleash Your Money Magnet, a power-packed webinar that will do what it says. Anyway, so what do we have going on for August? We have a lot of things happening in August. We also have some things happening in September that are going to affect you in August. We've got two eclipses in September and there is up to a six week radius in either direction of the actual events where, where news can come in related to the eclipses. So the entire month of August is covered in ripe energy for information events from the eclipses in September to start coming in. Something else notable that we have going on is that Jupiter is moving into Virgo. This happens officially on August 11th. So I want to help you understand not only what Jupiter can do, where it's going, what it will bring, but also to understand why different Libra placements experience different planetary transits and events in different areas of their chart. This is so critical. It's, it would be easier to do a forecast to say, Virgo, Jupiter's gonna go into Virgo and that's going to bring this energy to all of Libras. And that would be kind of true, but that's not the entire story. And I really want to help educate you on the subtle differences that make a huge difference in the translation of the horoscopes. Okay, so if you imagine, not imagine, this is true, that there are 30 degrees in each sign. So degrees um, from zero degrees to 29 degrees that you could have your placement in Libra at any one of those points. And if you have placements in early Libra, so like from zero to 10 degrees, or middle from around 10 to 20, or late from 20 to 30 degrees, you're going to have different experiences of the aspects that are happening. That's why I break things down into early, middle, and late. So the way that I can best explain this is if you imagine, this is a situation that I was in in a place I used to live where live music would play down a very long block from me. And I could hear the music in my house, in my yard. So I was having an experience of this live music. I wasn't at the event. And if I were at the event, I wasn't in the front seat of the event. I mean, either way, I wasn't at the event, but there are people at the event, there are people in the front seat of the event. There's different ways people are experiencing this musical event. So for me at my house, I was away from the event, but still somehow experiencing it. That is what having a late degree placement in a sign is like. When things start really brewing or happening in a certain area, for the early degree placements and some of the middle degree placements, you're, you're hearing it in the backdrop. It's like it's happening, there's energy moving, it's in the spirit of that place for you. But a lot of times things, especially with a transit, a planet moving through a sign, a planet moving through a house, you're not going to ha actually have that happening for you if you're a later degree placement until a while into the transit. This makes a huge difference. So late degree placements for Libra are going to just now be having Jupiter move into their 11th house, whereas the early degree placements, you're having the energy of Jupiter move into your 12th house. You have just experienced it in your 11th house. So if you've been hearing, if we just said, okay, well, Jupiter was going through your 11th house, this and this and this could happen, and we didn't include this other section of you to explain, well, it's not quite there yet for you, then it's going to lead to inaccuracies and confusion. So if you have a late degree placement of Libra, I highly recommend you also listen to the report for Scorpio. Scorpio, when I talk about early Scorpio this, early Scorpio that, you late degree Libra placements are going to pick up a lot of information that's relevant to you with those early degree Scorpio placements because your chart looks a little bit more like the early Scorpio chart than it does even to the early Libra chart in a lot of ways. Okay, so let's get in, talk about Jupiter. For the previous year, you early and middle degree placements have had the great benefic, the bringer of growth and optimism and expansion moving through your house of the internet. It's the house of social media, social settings, friendships, acquaintances, your circles, um, 
This is also the house of teams and groups and organizations and working with big companies or groups. Also the community, doing community related work. Um, this is also the house of uh, humanitarian efforts and volunteer work. I call the 11th house in the sign of Aquarius the Deepak Chopra placement because it's like a bridge building um, area. You know, and Deepak Chopra, if you don't know him, then it would be good to know who he is and follow his work because he's awesome. But he is, he is, is multicultural, multilingual, you know, appeals to the medical community with, because he's a medical doctor, but is very much entrenched in the alternative medical world. You know, he's, he's everywhere. He's global. And this is the energy of the 11th house. So you early degree Libra placements have had this expansion going on in the area of all of these things. You later degree Libra placements, you're just having this start. And depending on where your exact degree is, you might have up to another year of this really accentuating, expanding, bringing opportunities. If your business is not internet based and you want it to be, this is one of your best chances in 12 years, for 12 years to do that. If you're trying to do work in your community, you have community projects, you want to start nonprofits, you know, all of this kind of thing related to community, related to groups, you're going to have this amazing opportunity with Jupiter, this luck bringer, just coming and, and bringing all of these opportunities. So it's a time to be very diverse in, um, in your focus. You know, it's not a narrow focus. It's something that's very expansive in whatever field of experience it's in. So now for you early degree, Libra placements, Jupiter is getting ready to expand your 12th house. And this is a very special, unique placement. I mean, they really all are, but this placement among all of them is the most quiet, is the most lending itself to retreat and um, reclusivity, you know, which is totally different from where it's just leaving. It's like social things and, you know, being out in the world and all of that. And this is like the quiet house. This is the place of meditation and of you know, being up in the mountain, in the woods, just in this quiet place. This is the place of intuition, of working with your dreams, the ones you have at night, um, with working with your subconscious mind, with uh, confronting your fears and, and clearing your fears and working with your psychology. Um, and it's a very private energy, doing things behind the scenes where people don't really know what's going on and working in the backdrop. So you're starting a year of all of those things. And if you are a middle degree placement, this is brewing for you, but it's going to not get stronger for several months. You know, it's depending on where your placement is. This is coming and you'll feel it, but in the coming months, it's gonna really start. Your year of this um, sabbatical is going to really start. So if you are a person who has been thinking about going on sabbatical or planning a sabbatical timed with this Jupiter, this is perfect. It couldn't be more wonderful for that, for sabbatical, it's perfect. So the 12th house, um, if you could see this on, um, on a chart, if you've never seen a chart, it looks like a pizza pie and it has 12 slices of pizza. And at the point um, where you get to the 12th house, there's the magic line, which is called the Ascendant, which is your rising sign, which is the line between the 12th house and the first house. And the 12th house is like the cosmic soup. It's the energy of Pisces. It's the cosmic soup that all of our individual pieces spring from. So in the individuation process of an individual, you know, coming from the wellspring of totality, um, this is that magic point between the 12th and first house where that happens. So it's like you're in this resting, brewing phase. And then in another year, or depending, this will be staggered depending on your placement, but a year from the time this transit starts for you, that's when you burst forth with this exuberant new offering into life. You know, just your image, your way of seeing things, your way of doing things is just totally renewed and totally changed. And that comes from you spending this time in this quiet place. This is the time of rest. So this is this is a really big theme that's going to be starting for you. Um, you know, the early degree placements is going to be starting very much now, um, and you may have started feeling this over the the last previous months as well. So the later placements, you're just rushing into this like big group, connected, busy, 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 and all that kind of stuff, and then you'll have your rest time coming into next year. So 
on August 14th, oh, okay, before I get there. All right, so even though Jupiter is going to be moving into the 11th house and accentuating that for the later degree placements, in the month of August, all of the Libras are going to have a strong force in the 11th house. For your later degree placements, it's because um, Jupiter is moving in there. And for your early to middle degree placements, it's because you have Venus and Mercury and the Sun, um, and still Jupiter for a little while, for some of you, in the 11th house. So the 11th house is super strong in August for everyone. You later middle and later degree placements of Libra are going to have Venus and Mercury and the Sun moving into your 11th house like more into the end of August or into September. But it's like a party in your 11th house. And parties are, the way that we, I can um, compare a party to like a party in your chart, the more planets there are in a certain house, in a certain sign, they're like having a party, right? Okay, and so every planet has its own personality. So it's like the people at the party have their own personalities. And so the, the planets would be the different personalities at the party. And the, the sign that they're in, in this case it's all Leo, would be the mood that they're in. And where the party is taking place is the house. So the house is the location, the planets are the personalities, and the sign is the mood. Okay, so the mood for August is super festive. There's just massive amounts of Leo energy, which is vibrant, it's hustle bustly, it's creatively expressing, it's leading. And you're either experiencing this in the 11th house or some of you middle to later degree placements are having this party in August be in your 10th house of career and work and life purpose. So either this house of groups and, and organizations and teams and humanitarian efforts and all of these things are being accentuated in August from this party or your work sector is being just completely um, brought into the forefront and all of this vibrant energy is um, being activated there. And so for every planet that's there, there's a different piece of what that looks like. You know, the sun is, um, for the early degree placements, is in the 11th house. That brings a spotlight, it brings a focus. For you later degree placements, it's in the 10th house. That means your spotlight or focus is on the 10th house, career, work, life, purpose, things related to authority figures and your dad, um, or cer certain key male figures in your life it is generally how that um, comes through. And the spotlight brings needed information. It helps you see something more clearly, but it also can point out there's certain problems, there's certain challenges. And since we have Venus in retrograde at the same time, ruling love, beauty, and money, you have certain things from the, back, the past coming back into the present. If you haven't already listened to my Venus retrograde video, you have to do that because Venus ruling love, beauty, and money affects everybody in a big way. Those are the top, well, not as much beauty, but the the money and the relationship part are the two of the three top things that people ask about in readings. And when Venus is going retrograde, there's a massive amount of things that you have to know. And I did a separate video on that so that I wouldn't miss anything and I wouldn't take the time from the individual horoscope. So definitely do a search on my YouTube channel, Annie Botticelli, Venus Retrograde, and listen to everything that could be involved with Venus Retrograde. But the energy is like an earthworm going back over things involving love, involving money. So it's not the best time to launch new things, but it could very well mean that certain things coming from the backdrop are here present again for you to be working with. So we have all of that going on. Then we have this new moon in Leo on August 14th. Some of you are going to have that happen in the 11th house. You earlier placements, some of you middle placements. Again, another player at this party. The rest of you are going to have this new moon, new chapter happening in your career, work, and life purpose. So, regardless of where it is, it's something that's really vibrant. And it's also very exciting because new moons generally bring this feeling of something, you know, it's something new, it's a new chapter, it's a clean slate, it's starting afresh. And we haven't had a true new moon experience for several months because the previous new moons have been encumbered by these just bad, just heavy, weird, awkward, placements in the sky that are happening at the same time as the new moon that we're just totally putting a damper on the awesomeness of the new moon. And we don't have that this month. This is the first new moon in a while where we're not having to deal with that. So that's pretty cool, August 14th. Then we have a full moon on August 29th and it's 
it's happening in Pisces, the sign that rules your solar sixth house. So some of you will experience this energy as fullness coming to a health matter or um, a, a matter involving your pets or animals or a workplace drama or issue. Um, but for most of you, this is actually going to happen in your fifth house. So fullness, completion, fruition, coming to something involving children or a creative project or a hobby or some romantic thing. The fifth house is called the house of true love and it's also the house of like dating and romance. So there could be something that comes to fullness there. Um, and so full moons are in general a time when there's high emotions. You know, this is the time where we shake our energy field clear of all the emotional things that have built up throughout the month. I always liken this to a dog who's been wet, shaking all of that water and the water represents the emotional energy here, right? So at the full moon, if we haven't Already, we have this tremendous opportunity to shake free of all the emotional buildup residue in our fields. Really, really need to focus on clearing our energy fields out more regularly and not just relying on the full moon to shake it loose for us. Um, we were never taught that, you know? We were never taught that we have to clear our energy field as often as we clear our bladder. You really need to do it. You may not be able to see this energy field. Maybe you can, some of you can. I know that I can. Can see an energy field around people and it can feel the energy field around people very strongly. But whether you see it or not, it is there. And, and you'll notice it's there. Like think about it this way. If you're standing somewhere, let's say at a store, and someone walks up and they're just like standing right here in front of you. For no apparent reason, there's not like a big group of people, they're like standing in your field. and. You might probably be like, what the hell are you doing standing right next to me like that? And you, you feel that, you feel that strongly and that's like your space, like what? You get out of my space, you know? So it's it's very real, this, this space, they're not touching you. Or like you think of like a little kid, you know, taunting their brother or something. I'm not touching you, putting their hands in their face. I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. Well, it's like, you really feel that because that is in your field. This is this area, usually it's, you know, um, arm's length, in either direction. Other people have like really big fields that extend out way far and, and sometimes your field is a little shrunken and sometimes you can say have say and expand your field or take it in. But in general it's about arm's length around you in every direction. So this full moon, you know, especially being in a water sign, it's extra emotional, is this time to shake loose your energy field. But I think it's very prudent to spend time clearing out your emotional energy field every day. Part of how I do this is I keep bare feet as much as possible. I don't have shoes on right now. I don't generally have shoes on because energy is flowing throughout your field and you connect with um, energy fields through the bottom of your feet very strongly. And if you have shoes on all the time, everything's getting backed up in your field. So you have to try to keep your shoes off. Unless you have like a material, like a leather or something that that on the, on the sole, right? Because even if you have leather shoes, most of the shoes, have soles that are plastic or rubber. And plastic and rubber are bleh, not good for your energy field in general, right? But they're terrible for the flow of your energy field connecting in with the earth vibration. And this just really interferes. So if you can keep shoes on that have soles that don't have those um, constituents, then that would be better. Um, but also putting your bare feet and hands in the earth regularly, even your third eye, you can really feel this draining your energy field. You take energy in every day. You got to take the energy field, you know, clear the energy field out. So this full moon is going to shake it loose, whether or not you've done this, but this is a way to experience full moons a little bit, um, in a lighter way because there's less energy to shake off. So I can't see what's going on in your personal chart. I'd like very much to. If you'd like some assistance, you can go to my website, aspiritualspark.com and see about my personal live coaching. Also, definitely sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community. I do a write-up each month about the month coming that talks about the energies at play in a written form. And you get access to that as well as many other opportunities and things, um, things that I offer that... Uh, that other people don't have access to. And definitely look into my program, Shine. This is a 28 day virtual coaching program. It comes with 28 videos and 28 podcasts, each over this moon cycle that you choose to do this on. And it really helps to break down every area that I have seen people having problems with 
in their readings, I put that into the program to help you clear out the problems that are interfering with your um, highest expression in this lifetime. And I also have a new offering, which is Unleash Your Money Magnet. This is over two hours in a webinar of just power packed information, energy clearing techniques, um, all kinds of awesome things specifically around money. So I hope you have a wonderful August and I'll see you next month.